So uh, motivation. So why do we need time theory? That's yesterday we already commenced on this because uh, with uh, just one pay image, we got uh, something something difficult with the declaration and with the uh, currency. Basically, that we just the maximum we have something like two point eight uh, millimeter. But with the time theory, we can get uh, something more robust, something more high accuracy, and even uh, with just uh, less than one millimeter accuracy. So uh, for some argument, so uh, basically that uh, we need a better information to, to do something uh, uh, useful, something meaningful in a certain area. And they, we can decompose some uh, distribution uh, from all the method, uh, from all the phenomena, and of course, when we have a time theory, when we will have a better modeling of the surface information to know very well what's going on under underneath. And uh, for the technical um, uh, agreement, that's uh, uh, with the time theory, that's uh, we will have allowed us to to capture the slowly deformation area. And in that case, we because we have many observation. We can reduce the noise, so basically that we uh, we avoid the something artifact can be contributed from uh, atmospheric um, turbulence, and then of course we have uh, the way to handle of the fan wrapping. Like yesterday we talking about fan wrapping, but uh, fan wrapping is usually that is the most typical task in in uh, inside and time theory it just offer the way to handle it maybe more easier. So uh, what exactly the time theory in star processing? So it's not in uh, the, it's not in uh, new. It's just uh, uh, instead of one image, we have you many image together. So like yesterday we have something like okay, we had the one yesterday is, is this one. So uh, basically that uh, yesterday we we generate the, the the master one and this one. Yesterday we have this one image here. And then today we instead of using one image, we consider many many images in the same area, and every image here that we calculate every interferon plan with respect to a particular day, like the one we select here, like in uh, September 30, 2018. So, and how to generate it? We already just uh, uh, understand the way we to do to do it. So. Uh, uh, time theory approach in the side interferometry is a well-known problem and a well-known practice also because uh, over the last 20 years, there's a lot of development in terms of the time processing. Why people have to develop a lot of the algorithm? Because why? Because the most difficult in the, um, the, the, uh, the inside is the um, atmospheric because, you know, atmospheric is difficult. Because why? Because we cannot model in it. Because the weather condition, you never know. So, and the weather is contribute a lot in the inside processing. And uh, the main formula to dealing with the atmospheric uh, contribution, is we need a time theory. And uh, because of the time theory, we can form something like, uh, we can find some stable uh, target, what we call a permanent or uh, persistent scatterer. And uh, sometimes we can deal in with uh, just uh, the distributed scatterer that is um, uh, more available with respect to the to the BS because when we're talking about the permanent, it should be something very stable objects as a function of time, something related to human made like the tower and the building and the other object we can refer it to distributed scatterer and we call it the DS and uh, for the method. Uh, the system scatterer, we call it the, the BF. Recently, there is a certain uh, approach to try to link between two methods together. So there is some uh, some uh, uh, event say, and this event say for each method, like like the one we're talking about the BS here. That is what is the capability that can be analyzed in the rough way. So basically, that we can then. We can done in um, we can done everything in time theory uh, fraction processing using just the rough way, and in that case we can have the high resolution uh, something like single loop 
in the ferrogram, it may not we don't need to use in anything related to multi to improve the quality or improve the signal to noise ratio. Like yesterday, when we done the interferogram, we had to generate the multi looking to improve the quality of the interferogram. But with the BS, with the BS, that means we don't need to do anything with the multi looking. But they have a drawback is they have to uh, do a lot of calculating, and your computer have to go uh, have to uh, have to do a, a lot. And uh, sometimes it has some limitation in the. Um, in the non, uh, non urban area, something like if you go into the, the nature environment or rural, you will got uh, a limitation. And if you have combined with the DS, it will be okay. And for the DS, they uh, what exactly it is. So when we're talking about the small baseline distributed uh, scatterer, they they dealing with the um, uh, decorrelation by uh, by the way that they improve the quality of the program by using the multi looking. Why they have to do multi looking? Because why? Because uh, they have to work in unwrapped fade data. And with the unwrapped fade data, uh, if they are working with a single look complex uh, interferogram, there's no way to do unwrap uh, correctly. So, one way to improve the quality of the interferogram is they have to do with uh, multi looking and then they do unwrapping. And for the method um, as fast uh, um, small baseline, everything should be done in the unwrap phase. And then in this case, they they will be very quick and very easy to do implementation. And uh, because they do multi looking, so they can have a better performance in non area, in an urban uh, scenario like like outside uh, the city. And because they had they they done this uh, in the fraction of um, of multi looking here, and then uh, they using start they starting from the unwrapping here. So that's why whenever they have a fair unwrapping error, they can be contributed to the the final products. And that's why the the DS or the S path on small base line of course they have some limitation in terms of accuracy. And usually that's they cannot uh, remove the atmospheric contribution like one hundred percent. In that case, they have to use all the data to do um, to do um, uh, to do modeling and subtract it. And um, that's it for the DS and the DS. And uh, uh, just a little bit, I'm going to decide, going to detail why we why we have to this one and what is that uh, definition. So basically that we learned yesterday when we had the satellite, they transmit the signal, the signal turns to the crowd. So they do interactive with many scatter on the ground here and then back to the satellite. And you see here at a function of time, usually that the, um, the DS uh, time series, uh, the phase is quite crazy like this one, they totally almost randomly, but for the, for the BS, so usually that's they they have a strong uh, contribution because there is just one dominant scatter inside a certain resolution cell. So you see here because tend to this uh, dominant of this scatter, the phase at a function of time is going to very stable. In that case, it have a lot in terms of uh, decomposition of other uh, errors, other noise. So that is the main uh, difference between the, a certain uh, BS and a certain DS. So, uh, so in, the, in the real life, you can see the DS, it should be related to something very stable at function of time, something made by human, like building, or even in nature, it should be very stable scenario like the rock. Uh, also, uh, recently, that's people also uh, take into account not only the BS and the DS inside the BS processing by just consider not uh, not vegetation. Vegetation like forest is crazy. There's no way to handle the, the forest in uh, time series inside processing. We just focus on soft vegetation or uh, even in some homogeneous crowd. So to try to re uh, to try to remind you that whenever we're talking about the vegetation with the radar, it's very difficult stuff 
because why? Because the, the, the forest is, is changing a lot. So uh, whenever just a little bit uh, windy, uh, the branch and uh, the, the plant and the trunk will be moving. So that's why the forest is difficult. To do study to forest, we need a very long wavelength to be living with the forest. Like the B band uh, mission, we could be lost in 2023. With the 69 centimeter, we'll handle something about vegetation. And in that case, we can use the B band to understand something uh, underneath of the forest. For example, if there is some deformation or some soil moisture under the forest. Okay, so uh, we're talking about uh, the, the technique. So uh, you see here, whenever we're talking about the technique, we're talking just about the network, how we combine everything together. Like if we're talking about the BS, uh, BS technique, usually that we, we focus on one master, so one super master, and they do everything, do everything we do in the federal camp with this one, with this guy. So this guy is the super master on the platform one, Every secondary image here, they do correlation and they do in the pharogram. So that is the, the, the network typical in the DS, uh, in the BS, sorry. For the DS network, they, uh, because they, uh, they have to figure out what is the best way to do, uh, to do uh, um, in terms of improve, improve up performance. So they have to figure out how to combine in such a way that we exploit the most uh, information we have. So they don't want to lose anything information. So they want to try to combine an, a network in a certain uh, um, a certain uh, requirement, something like if it's a soft baseline. So you see here from here to here is okay, but from here to here, very far away. So there is no connection. And even from here to here, uh, the, 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 uh, the baseline is okay, but very far away in terms of time. So they, uh, they just consider the soft tie and the soft uh, baseline only. So basically that they try to minimize the temporal decorrelation and they try to minimize the geometry decorrelation. So there is one question. Uh, yes, David, please. Uh, the, for the DS success uh, network and the red point is a uh, baseline of the, the, the start image, every time uh, the satellite acquire an image, they will have a baseline. Or, or when we have two images, we have. I, I can feel with the baseline uh, definition in in the DS uh, network a little. Ah, okay. Baseline between two satellites, right? So the baseline is just the distance between the two satellites, right? Whenever we are talking about the baseline, we're talking about the two satellites. I mean, for example, that uh, if we select this one, we calculate to this one, so we know the distance from here to here, and that is the baseline. Uh, yeah. So the baseline is just the distance between the two satellites. So from the satellite, we have the orbit information. So you know very well they have position at a certain time. So there are people trying to use at the same at the same time uh, where exactly the, the location of the satellite and they're using that one to calculate for the baseline. And that's all. For example, that given uh, we have with the, um, uh, the network at this one, and when you float on this one and you see, ah, this one is not really good for the master, maybe this one is better, right? And then you can, can go to this one and set this one for the master. Or even you can go, oh, this one not really optimized. So you can go, you can change a little bit uh, slightly to go to this one it for optimize. So basically, if you, if you want to select the master, so uh, basically that uh, you plot in this one and you see the, the, the distribution of the baseline and of the tie and you select uh, Later, there's no problem. I mean, at the beginning, you don't know which one is optimized because you don't have the um, uh, the baseline information. You can uh, you just select maybe just randomly one image in the center, and then you do it here, and you see it's okay. Keep it to moving on. Otherwise, you can select other one would be the master. Nothing wrong. Yeah. 
nothing okay nothing wrong here okay so we move to this one so uh, he is the bs and he is the ds the other one recently developed that they combine both methodology just here we, they don't need to any they don't need to worry about anything about for the master okay so they do everything they combine everything so basically that uh, that is the way they can explain all the information available to do a processing okay uh, i just here just one example that uh, when we have a data dealing with um, the stable target so for example you see there's a, a line here and you see the scatter is very visible in a, in a, a man-made object here and is a, a quite a lot in the urban let's go a little bit outside like, like this one outside like this one there is no scatter and then if we go to detect it uh, consider the the bs you see the a lot of information available here a lot of information available here so with the um, the, uh, the combined technique is allow us to uh, appreciate uh, in terms of spatial coverage and then uh, in terms of the performance they if they have uh, the spatial coverage then uh, like this one they can gain some uh, some uh in terms of performance so they can give more insight what's going on there so uh so uh, here I am. We we are. What we are going to do uh, in um, in the rest is uh, try to understand what exactly the BS uh, algorithm, and we we will do it in uh, in some in term of practical. Uh, in ter uh, okay, just one question. Uh, if the baseline is defined by the distance between two sensor. I guess the image will acquire two different I can feel what the point represents for one. Uh, so uh, uh, I go back here. When we're talking about the baseline here, like the baseline, that's the master one here. So from here to here, the baseline it will be corresponding to something like 1,000 meter. So it should be two images. So the first the first satellite here, the second satellite here, that, that is the distance to have the baseline. And this one is also the same. Like if we select this one in the master, from here to here, it's by, the baseline is something like 400 meter here. So the baseline here is not, it's not uh, it's just one accusation that you know, it should be two. So the distance. And here is, uh, for example, for the uh, DS success, the distance yes. is about uh, 500 meters. The distance for uh, a space flight is around 500 meters, right? Because yeah. the like, here, this point here, this point is represent for the accusing time. Like in, yeah. in 2012, we have uh, this image and yeah, in yeah. Uh, and in 2013, we had this image. So from here to here, we have the baseline in terms of the time in one year. And in terms of the, the normal baseline, it's about just about well, maximum uh, 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 about 20 meters or maybe 50 meters here. You see here. So the, the, the normal baseline on the, on the Y axis is not. It's exactly. Not the, the, the normal baseline is Y axis. And uh, in the um, in the horizontal asset in the um, temporal uh, baseline, so you got it. Sorry, the normal space line here is not a perpendicular space line between two. The normal space line is the perpendicular base line that is the same meaning. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay, so we'll, we move to next one. <clears throat> so uh, yesterday we already talking about the summarize. So uh, we just I just show you here again here. So basically that uh, the the face is the sum of many contribution. We have a topography and we have information and we have the unnecessary contribution from atmospheres and the noise. So the uh, the innovation of the BS uh, 
techniques is they, they try to select uh, the stable target, which we can assume that this one will be uh, uh, minimized. Cap say we can ignore the contribution of the noise in terms of BS. Uh, so we can expect that the variance of the noise with the BS target is very low. And in this case, we can uh, assume that they, uh, there is no contribution in terms of the total of the phase. And in this case, we can uh, use a, a certain uh, BS network to estimate the atmospheric contribution. And in this case, we have atmospheric contribution. We can able to calculate for deformation and for the residue of topography. Okay, so that is the key idea. The key idea is we don't analyze for the whole image, but we just uh, focus on a certain number of stable target, what we call uh, highly coherent or the persistent of the permanent scatterer. Usually that's at a function of time, it will be very stable. And it's just one point I get. So remember that, uh, that usually there is one dominant scatter inside a certain uh, B cell. They have just one dominant scatterer and then they contribute the phase at a function of time, very stable. Using that one, we can systematically analysis by taking into account all the available data set and then we can re we can estimate and then we can remove the atmospheric turbulence so basically this phase term here and uh, because of that one we just focus on the, the stable target and the phase is very stable so that's why we can achieve the, ta the target motion with very high accuracy that is our expectation so uh, let's move a little bit into the algorithm. So uh, basically that one, we're not focused on one uh, target only, but we, we're doing a, a network. Like for example, we consider the phase difference between the two nearby um, target, like the I and the O here, the I and the O here. And in this case, what we are going to do is we're trying to estimate a certain constant deformation velocity like this one, the constant information velocity. And then uh, the, um, there is some other component in this one. What is it here? This one is uh, usually that uh, this one is uh, corresponding to the contribution of topography. Remember that we have a topography contribution uh, and then we can use some information available from the DEM something like the SRTM uh, uh, data available or some uh, Kubernetes the DM available recently. That, that is information we have. We can calculate the contribution of the borophy, convert it to the phase and then subtract it in the phase. But, and then there's nothing, uh, uh, there's, uh, there's no way to come and say photography there's always have a certain what we call a residue of the elevation or perhaps say the, the relative uh, elevation error here. So uh, we can write it's the contribution of the residue of topography here and the velocity here, that's our, our parameter of interest in. And the other one here is a non-linear motion because we, we try to decompose the displacement. This can be right in, in a linear and non-linear terms together. So we put the linear here inside the residue of topography, and we put the other one is nonlinear atmospheric contribution and the noise. So what do we have? Usually that's um, at a function of time, we have a certain uh, um, uh, figure like this one at a function of baseline, at a function of time, usually that's the residue uh, of the topography and the constant of the velocity they have a certain relation like this one. We can, using this uh, correlation, we can, we can uh, estimate this guy and this guy. The other one, what we call the phase residue, because why? Because we, we can model in the, the, phase, the phase observation by modeling in this way to do some correlation and estimate for the relative um, topography and relative uh, velocity. The other one is the phase residue. And we can expect that uh, this guy is very small contribution. Why? Because first of all, the BS 
is very, very um, small in terms of the noise. So we expect that the variance of the noise of the PS is very low. For the atmospheric contribution, because we consider the phase difference nearby up to this cell, so it's nearby. So basically that uh, if it's nearby, so we assume that from here to here, there's not something uh, strong uh, different. So that's why nearby, we can see that it's very small. And for the motion of nonlinear, because it, even it's not linear, if we, if we consider just to nearby targets, we can assume that it's very similar also. That is why we can have the variant of the nonlinear motion uh, variant of the atmospheres and the non and the variant of the noise is very small. In this case, we can assume we can uh, because some of this one is not available. We use in this phase observation to calculate for this guy. Let's see how to do that. So usually that is just a very easy uh, linear regression. So at a function of normal baseline, we have the phase. So we fit a line here. So in this case, we can estimate the relative uh, contribution and the residue contribution from topography at this one here, at the function of normal baseline. And at the function of time, we do the same with for estimate the, the relative velocity here. So we can estimate the residue of topography and velocity of, uh, and the relative of uh, velocity. Whenever we have the, uh, whenever we have to that value, we can put together, we can put together and subtract this one. And we got the, the phase residue here. And uh, we try to estimate, we try to understand the quality of the fit by calculate this uh, metric. So basically the, the, this guy is just the phase residue here. So we sum everything here. So we divide by a certain number here to get the coherent. If the coherent is good, something like one, it means that the phase observation, if in, in perfectly masked with the observation. Yeah. It means the modeling here and observation here. If the, if the, the gamma, if the coherent indicator here is equal one, it's absolutely perfect. It means observation and the modeling is okay. So it fit together, it matched together. If it does not cap, say the coherent here, it go into zero, I'll go, I'll go into zero point one one or zero point two. If that is not good, so we remove that uh, that point. So basically, we discard the contribute uh, the consideration of that P cell. In this case, we drop some uh, target uh, considering. Uh, in this way, we can uh, we uh, we have uh, the the way to do quality control. So in this case, we can estimate. For the whole image, for the whole network, the residue of topography and the relative of velocity. So uh, to try to remember in terms of processing that uh, we, uh, whenever we done, we should be sure that the phase residue should let time by, otherwise everything will be a practical for the assumption. And then finally, whenever we done it, we can do some uh, something like uh, fan wrapping in a network. Like if you have the the first one uh, here, and you you can write out this this formula, and you can write out a certain um, equation here, and we wrap it in a linear equation here, and we try to get the phase uh, estimation just by using the linear square um, estimator. So basically, that uh, everything is uh, easy after that. So. Uh, uh, before we go on, I just want to give you a little bit uh, highlight on this uh, slide uh, uh, because it's quite interesting for you because uh, maybe it, uh, it can be helpful for you in order to stop also in other application because like this one here, when we define the minus and plus, it means the minus and the minus one, and here is one. So it means that we, we're talking about like and give you an other slide to better explain. So this one, this one. So, uh, okay, so like this one, uh, like you have an, a network like this one, like suppose that we have the observation at the function of time, 
uh, we have the, um, so basically that you have a set up a trial uh, difference so in, inside observation in, the, in millimeter, like tell this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay. So I have a single uh, pixel here. So basically, and then we have 11 offset. And I mean, here we have just 11 side image. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 11 here. And then we can combine in a certain network at this one, like one, two, one, two, we have an observation, one, six, one, six, we have observation. And two, three, two, three, we have observation. So basically that uh, as a function of time, we have observation and we can link together like this one. And then well, our job is to try to uh, try to reconstruct the, um, uh, the movement at the function of time. And uh, to do that, it's quite easy because why? Because uh, uh, like you, you see here, like we had to build something like, uh, uh, we have to build something like minus and one here. For example, if we're talking about the phase one and two, so, Minus one and plus one, two. Just, uh, for example, if we're talking about one and two here, one and two. So in G, in G matrix, we can write something like. So if we got this one, so one, so one, so we got this one. The other one should be zero and zero. So how many images we have here? We have images is something like 11, uh, 11 images. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we got this one. And the other one here is one six, so minus one. So here one, two, three. So here it is one. Right? And here for symbol two, three. So we got this one zero. And here the first is minus one. So, and here is one, so F, the other is zero. So here is just, what we call the G matrix here. So the G matrix, uh, what we call the G design matrix. So whenever, whenever we have the G design matrix, we can uh, write something like, okay, here we have the, the G with multiplied by, so, so G is just uh, the matrix like minus one and one here and uh, why is this observation? So what we want to show, we want to show this equation. So it's basically, uh, basically that's very easy. So we take a G on T. So usually that's uh, And then we can we have to convert this one. So this should be a inversion. This one is here.
So GTE, what we say, the transporters are So basically, if we multiply, multiply like this one, so it's automatically gone. So we got this one, it's equal. Equal to this one. So that's, that's quite easy. So the observation we have is this guy. So we have this guy. And the G matrix is just a design matrix like this one. So in this case, we got we got the parameter we want to estimate. That is a, that is the um, uh, uh, the time series at the front of time here. So whenever we done, we got like this one. You see here. So I will just show you the way to calculate it, maybe just very quickly because it's quite easy. Right. Okay. So I got this one here. So that is the data we have. So you see here the data, that's the observation we have here. And that is the, the preference one, and that's the secondary one. So uh, the first one should be minus one, and the the second one should be one for the for the design matrix. So basically, that uh, I got to design matrix here. So that is the first one. So that the data we have here. So we we take the the second column e equal minus one, and the third column e one. So whenever we done it, so we got this one. So we got this one. So we got J. Okay. You see here. So G design matrix is just minus one and minus one. That is something exactly we, we already discussed here. So you see here that the minus one and one, it's minus one and one, it's minus one and one here, minus one and one. Here minus one and one minus one and one. So the design matrix is very easy to uh, to write. And then whenever we do inverse, so we got this one. So like the one we have it here, we we got it here. Like we got this one. So that exactly the same. That is the one we have. It should be like, like okay, the inversion of the transport, uh, transport of the G multiply by G and then multiply by G and then multiply by the data. So we got this one. So whenever we got this one, we can refer to study and then we can plot it. So you can see here. So that is the idea of time series uh, data. So wh whenever we have a time series in the data, you do something like, uh, like processing like this one, like, like this one, and you have the very high accuracy at a function of time. Okay, that's all. So just trying to summarize that, um, the techniques is very powerful nowadays because why? Because it uh, uh, that is the unit function of the radar. Because whenever you want to study, we you can go back to even two thousand, uh, even a very long time ago in nineteen ninety three. Whenever we have the data, and uh, nowadays the feder the ferrometry is very well documented, very well technique, and uh, very well measured. So, uh, but try to remember that. This target not provide everywhere. It rely on the pixel, on the target that have something like loud decorrelation. 
at the function of time and the baseline. And for the darkness of the BS, it's very, uh, very uh, well in uh, the urban scenario with all the one, with all the scenario, like not urban or uh, in general, the, the combination techniques will be best for both uh, scenario. Uh, for all this um, recommendation, I just want to show you that if you want, you can read my, uh, a certain uh, summary overview of the year development of uh, the technique. And that's all for the theory. Is there any question before we moving on for the practical? Um, yeah, I have a question. For example, uh, the yes. uh, image two is uh, seen twice by the image six and three, I guess. Do you mind coming back to the... Which one, please? Uh, Do you mind coming back to the to the graph in your G-Design matrix? Uh, I, in this one, I mean this uh, one. No, on the... On the this yeah, one? Yeah. yeah. Yes? Uh, yeah, you see... Uh, Image, um, for example, image uh, two, it's seen by image five, it's connected into image five and three. Yes. How your um, matrix is able to uh, handle that? Uh, the matrix here, the, if you run this one next, we're going to like two and three, and so mm -hmm. zero. So it should be minus one and zero and zero and then one. So it's just an average? It just does the average of the two displacement? Yeah. Okay. Something like this one. Okay, so okay. I, I, what I just want to show you that uh, the principle is very easy. So yeah, yeah. minus one and one and we do the linear square estimation and that's done. Okay. So. Yeah. 